really was a lifesaver for me for like bio and physics and then communication studies as well. This is Brianna Douglas and in 2021 she did the impossible. She ranked first in Jamaica for physics, first in Jamaica for chemistry, first in Jamaica for communication studies and six in Jamaica for biology in the Cape Unit 1 exams. But how did she do it? And how can you apply her methods in preparation for exams? By the end of this video, you're going to understand what it really takes to be top of your region in this year's FISEC and CAPE exams. So I applied that when I was doing my exams and it worked. Wait, did you expect to achieve what you did? Um, okay, so I did. Um, I did practice a lot. I did put in a lot of work and also studying time. So I did expect to, you know, get good grades and perform well. But in terms of my rankings on the um, national, like regional merit list, I didn't expect that. What was your reaction when you found out that you were out? So I was obviously really excited, you know. It felt like all of the hard work that I put in really paid off. It was really rewarding for me to see that, you know, I performed that well and stuff. I, I actually ended up crying a little bit after I found out because I was just so happy. So yeah, at the end of the day, I was just really excited and it felt really rewarding for me personally. Tell me about from the time you selected um, Cape Unit 1, um, physics and bio and chemistry to the time you were preparing for these exams. Okay, so um, when I, I when I really started studying after like you know mock exams at school, how I really prepared was that I obviously I followed along with the syllabus when I was like reading. So like I would read my textbook, I would read the study guide and I'd follow along with the syllabus so I could ensure that I was like, you know, covering all of the topic, covering all the objectives that they wanted and stuff. And I also did use YouTube. I did watch a lot of like videos catered to like A level, like the channels that really cater to A level because their syllabus is really similar to ours. And so when they teach it really, it, they're basically covering the same thing that I covered. So I would use their videos as like a reinforcement or just like an intro before I started like a topic so I had an idea of what was going on because you know, when I see the visuals, it really helps a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's why I really prepared content wise. And then to reinforce everything that I learned and to ensure I was really understanding, I did practice a lot of past paper questions. I tried to do most, if not all of the past papers for like all my different subjects. And for chemistry specifically, when I finished the past papers, I did look online to see like if I could find like A-level past papers because they're a, they're a bit harder than ours. So it really helps me to like challenge myself and really see if I can like apply the knowledge that I really studied to figure it out because it really helps a lot. My teachers um, were also a big part, you know, in my preparation because, you know, they would host review sessions and they would go through past papers with us, which also really helped me to prepare. How do you prepare for internal exams and tests? Do you have, like, the same study pattern? I do have the same study pattern. I just use YouTube and I use my, my books. And I do do the past papers because most of my tests are based off of past papers. They just use the same questions. So that's really how I prepare for like internal exams and tests. So what are some challenges that you face while preparing for these exams? And how did you overcome them? Well, I still do experience these challenges. I wouldn't really say that I'm overcoming them fully, but it's not as bad as it was before. So I, but I do still have a lot of work to do in terms of trying to like, you know, overcome them. But I do procrastinate a lot. Um, it's not that I don't like to, it's not that I don't like to study or that I find studying to be like a burden, but it takes a lot of time to like actually start studying. But then when I do start studying, I do get distracted a lot with like my phone or just, you know, wanting to do other stuff. But what I do to overcome it is like, I try to set like times when I know I'm supposed to be studying. So there's like sometimes in the night 
where I just know that I have to, you know, really start doing work at this specific time where you'll just find me trying to do some sort of school work at a specific time, like in the night or something. Okay, so have you ever tried like putting away the phone or giving it to your parents until? No, I haven't tried that. I haven't tried that. Um, I just can't do it. I don't know. I don't think I can really turn it off. I think we all struggle with that. How do you balance school, a social life, um, volunteering? How do you balance all of that? I do spend too much time doing like, you know, social stuff and just like leisure activities. So I still do have some more work to do in terms of balancing it. I do, I should spend more time doing work. But to balance it, I try to set goals for like the day in like my notes of just mm-hmm. stuff that I want to like get done for the day. So I don't know, it kind of helps me to balance my time because it's like I can't go to sleep until I, you know, complete this or complete most of it because it just makes me feel like I have more control over the day or like just how I spend my time. Why did you choose to study sciences? I've always liked the sciences from, you know, when I was like in the early grades, like grade seven, eight, and then when we're choosing our subjects, you know, I chose the sciences because I really enjoy learning about, you know, the way stuff works or just biochemistry and physics. I do like physics because, you know, it has the math component, which I really like, and then bio learning about the body and just chemistry is like, I find it really interesting. I do, I don't find it difficult to understand compared to when I try to like study like business subjects or like, you know, tech like IT. I did find those a bit hard for me to like grasp. But so the sciences were always easier for me to like grasp and understand. So I was like, I just chose them because I really enjoy it. Learning about those stuff is my cup of tea <laughs> so what do you plan on doing after completing six form so i'm actually applying to medicine at ua so that's the direction i want to go after six form and the last question is what is one piece of advice you would give to someone who is going to do cape exams this year Okay, so I would definitely tell them to make sure that they're following along with their syllabus when they're studying. And if they can source mark schemes, that was really beneficial. It really was a lifesaver for me for like bio and physics and then communication studies as well. When I found the mark schemes, it really helps because when you see the answer that they're looking for, what they're looking for, how they allocate the marks, you can apply it to like when you see similar questions, the answers that they have, or just the structure, how they structure their answers, you can apply it to those same questions. And it also helps you to not, to really put a short answer that's not, you know, too long where you ramble too much and then you don't end up getting your points across. So like you, you put an answer that's brief, that's effective, that's gonna get you the marks. And also maybe sometimes you're not, descriptive enough because maybe you don't know that they want you to really go in depth so when you see what they're looking for it really helps you when you're formulating your answers in the exam so I applied that when I was doing my exams and it worked